Yep, Charlemagne the guy. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Back for another week of Brilliant yes, Idiots. Sir. This week's podcast is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Start a completely personalized website with the new guided design system, mm. Squarespace Blueprint. Choose from professionally curated layout and styling options to build a unique online presence from the ground up. Tailor to your brand of business and optimize for every device. Easily launch your website and get discovered fast with integrated optimized seo tools so you show up more often to more people and grow the way you want whether you're just starting out and managing a growing brand squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website engage with your audience and sell anything from products to content to time all in one place all on your terms head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch go to squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10 percent off your first purchase of a website or domain that's squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10 percent off your first purchase of a website or domain let's start the show hezekiah walker what's up my boy we've come a long way man bro i remember um <laughs> i remember you know being on instagram and you know seeing people talk about you wearing the same pair of kicks every episode man. i had two pairs bro i had two pairs of joints. and you know <laughs> i remember you telling that person to get off you man so when i get packages like this Oh, wow. When I get packages like this, first of all, look at the front of the box. What does, what's the number say on the front? All oh, right. You oh. see the little plaque on the front? What's yours say right here? Right here. What does the plaque say? What's that say? What number is that? That says... 25? Wow. 25 of 36. Oh, wow. Mine says 24 of 36, I believe. Wow. Yes, 24 of 36. Somebody sent me a DM. They was like, yo, what's you and Shochi? shoe size you want to send you something mm. and it came in this nice Wu-Tang box wow okay Dwayne you should be playing Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with right now honey too they got it's got this honey. nice Wu-Tang forever whatever this is signed by RZA and then it's got the Wu-Tang Dunks baby oh wow the Wu-Tang Dunks okay wow only 36 of these were made and yeah. you got a pair of shows. Nah, nah, okay. Nah, nah, nah. How far have you come? Wow. How far have you come from being yeah. clowned yeah. for not having the fly shoe game Damn, to, to, the, to them wanting to send you a pair of these and only 36 of them were made? And some Staten Island honey. Wouldn't need oh. that. Might make you retarded. But other than that, <laughs> other than that, okay? Wu-Tang Dunks, all right? Shout out to RZA and the whole Wu-Tang Clan, Nike, everybody uh, that made these dunks. I, I, we appreciate it. Fire, man. Yeah, shout out to y'all, dude. By the way, these are worth like $1,200 right now. No way. Yes, right now. All right, well, thank you. This feels like a promo. It's not, I promise No, it's not you. a promo. This it's is not, not a promo. promo. This is authentic I, I am gratitude. An influencer. I am an influencer. <laughs> I am an influence. Yo, okay. speaking of influence, we ha we have come a long way. Man, we've come a long way. We man. have come a long way from you know just a little podcast where we talk shit, you know, call each other gay. Um, now we're the two greatest political pundits walking oh, the face of the earth. I mean, it's kind of crazy. We just out here swaying <laughs> elections. You know what I mean? We the just two out here swaying greatest elections. political pundits walking the face of the earth. Right here on Brilliant Idiots Podcast. We who would have ever thought? Who would have thought Come that on, we would have decided the presidential election? All of my fellow brilliant idiots, who would have thunk it? Shit. <laughs> okay. Shit. Who would have thunk Definitely it? Definitely not Taylor's hating ass. She didn't know that we had that kind of motion. You didn't know that we had that kind of motion we could sway political elections. No, nah, that shit is kind of crazy. I was reading an article yesterday. An article said, uh, what was the headline of the article? What was like, what is flagrant? And why it might have got Trump elected. Oh I think it was on God. Vulture or someplace else. It was some it was someplace, right? But then it's like people say the same thing. They like, yo, you know, you know, you might have Charlemagne, you, you know, you had a good great conversation with Kamala. You know, that, we hope that sways voters. I don't fucking know, bro. I'm just here doing my job. I feel like you're just here doing your job. How could you not talk to the president? I like, I don't get it. Like, of course you got to talk to Kamala. She's also, the vice president of the United States of America. Yeah, but I've like, been getting death threats all week, though. Yeah. What yeah. was the best? Welcome to the club. <laughs> what, was <your laughs> what was the best one? The, the best one was yeah. from this Latino guy. What did he say? The, the email was crazy. It was like, he's going to cut my throat and all of this and that. And they actually did trace his email back because that was like, when well, they traced his email back, they got his picture and everything else. And the first thing I saw when I saw him, I was like, Build the wall. Kamala's border almost got you. It's killed, a bipartisan bro. border. 
Like everybody has to take credit for the border. I don't even bro. know what that means. <laughs> it means that the border. This guy's a real pundit it now. Means that the yeah, border. Yeah, yeah. Stop trying to talk so smart on brilliant. It means it is, that bro. the border has been fucked up under every administration, and it's going to take both parties to fix it. Yeah, but why? They got to just. They just got to be like, yo, we fucked up with the border. Why won't she just say that? Because I, I listened to the whole thing you did with her. I agree. She's never been better than when she's with you. I wish that you would just ask her every single question. You keep it light. You keep it funny. But you also give her pushback on things you care about. And she had these like, listen, she's boring because she's just talking like policy. She's not trying to like be entertaining and fun. It's boring. But you go through it and you're like, oh shit, she knows shit. This is good. But and didn't then we say, she, but then she got to the border question. She's like, yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with the border basically. And it's like, well, she didn't say that. She just kept pushing. She kept going back to the point that we have to come together to fix the border. We had a bipartisan bill that Democrats and Republicans had agreed upon, but mm -hmm. Donald Trump told the Republicans not to do it. Cause if you do it, it's going to give Biden a political win. Wait till I get back. So here. executive order the border. But that's not gonna keep it. That's not. They've they, they've been doing that. You're getting death threats, bro. Because they won't keep the border closed. What I'm saying is executive order that shit. Yeah. They've been, executive they've been, order. I, mean, listen, I already see the headline right now, man. Yeah. No, 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 no. Whatever Charlemagne says is on Fox News. Oh, my no, God. This is 30 seconds. Right. a Trump ad. Yo, yo, right now. No, right now. Right I'm now. a fucking right Trump now. ad. Right now, we got to say what's up to our, our listener at Fox News. Because you know Fox put one guy on Brilliant Idiots. Yeah. And he got to wait for Charlemagne's quote. Nah, Give nah, him something nah, juicy. Nah, nah, they, Give they, him something juicy. Nah, that's a lot of them over there. I mean, listen. Build the wall. No. <laughs> Kamala, build the wall. It's Jamaicans tough. are hard workers. By the build way, the wall. By the way, you know what build the wall just means? Build the wall just means we want border security. Who doesn't want border security? Talk that shit. Everybody wants border security. Talk Democrats that want shit. it. Republicans want it. Everybody Talk wants the same shit. thing. Uh, they just want people to be come, they want people to come to this country uh, legally. Uh, that's uh, it. Uh, uh, MAGA! But it's not. But time out. This is MAGA what? country, baby. But, 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 but listen, they're MAGA! all they're all saying the same thing. It's MAGA! not MAGA. No, this is not MAGA. MAGA! Border security is not MAGA. Border what? security is America. What happens? You take the W, you turn it upside down. <laughs> MAGA tank clan. <laughs> we are MAGA tank clan right now. What if them shit? This is Fox. Do yeah. you think because of your boy Trump, right? Who's my boy? My boy is Tim Walsh's little <laughs> ass. I like that little do fucker, bro. Do you think Shout because of Walsh. Trump, he's repositioned this, the stereotype of what you just said? Wait, because of Trump, <laughs> he's repositioned the stereotype of what I just yeah, said. Yeah, because there used to be another there used to be another group that used to get accused of that. Oh, I figured that joke out, by the way. I did that shit to Cincinnati. You ripped? Yeah, that shit gone. That shit went hard. You pulled the chat? <laughs> nah, yeah, you'll see it. <laughs> I just had to flip it. I just had to flip it. I was starting. What you, what you mean? You had I just to flip had to flip it. Flip it. Like by, I, the time, by the time this, it'll probably be out by the time this comes out. What did you mean you had to flip it? So, like, I was starting with the the cats and dogs and eating the cats and dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What I, so I started with that, and then I was trying to prove it after the fact. So with this, the way I did is I did the reverse. I was like, I was on a flight over here, a guy from Cleveland, he's a big Browns fan. I didn't even know the Browns were, were the mascot was a dog. Yeah, absolutely. And dog they, they were like, yeah, dog yeah, pal. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I said dogs. And then now we're in Cincinnati, obviously Bengals, right? So it's a tiger, a cat, you know, so dogs and cats, you know. And it's, well, that's why the Haitians came to Ohio. <laughs> and I go, I go, you guys were luring them here. <laughs> so, so it's like saving. Sa passe! Sa passe! To all the Haitian masters. <laughs> Yo, shout out Haitians. Oh my God. Haitians, one of the best MAGA communities out there, bro, actually. MAGA? What do you mean? Of course, MAGA. Oh, make America Griot again? <laughs> Griot? What's they, what is that? They eat Creole. Yeah. No, Griot. They eat Griot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Then that was good. Yeah, that was good. I <laughs> yeah, thought was it good. was bad, but then it would turn out to be really good. <laughs> if I pronounced it right. Yeah, that was fire. Shout out to the Haitians, man. Yeah, shout out to the Haitians, bro. Yeah, but we got to be careful because we are the two greatest political pundits. Anything that... Walk in the face of the earth today. I'm in a Trump ad, uh, anti-trans Trump ad. Uh, that was fire. Yeah, the but, day that you interviewed... I didn't interview nobody. Kamala! The day you interviewed oh, yeah, Kamala! Oh, yeah, the day before. He started, run, he started, they running, started it running it. The day before, yeah, yeah. They know did, what they're did, doing? Yeah, they Matter of fact, I think he might have started running it that weekend. No, I thought it was it the, was day, the day, day before. Of. It was Monday, you're right. It was Monday. Genius. They started running it on Monday. Um, and it's crazy because we didn't give him permission to do that. You know? So it's like... <laughs> And we and we sent them a cease and desist. They what don't the give fuck a fuck. Is that? 
tell it. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You need Secret Service checking your Yo. water. She got you. Taylor, you what, didn't know what? Taylor was Haitian, did you? What? She got you. She getting you the fuck out of Holy here now. Shit, That's bro. right. You want? You thought that was a funny joke? What was that? You thought that was a funny joke? Yo, my bad. My bad, Haitians. Stop what I say. <laughs> that was crazy what you just put in that water. <laughs> <laughs> but the, it's, the, it's crazy. Yo. What? Donald Trump's America would never let that happen. <laughs> they would never let the water Donald come out Trump so don't care about clean water. He already said that. Uh-huh. He Listen. got Robert F. Kennedy Jr. there to clean up all the water. Yo, what's up with him and Robert F. Kennedy? I thought he was talking shit about they Robert F. Kennedy talking Jr. Shit, but now they're boys, bro. It's like Marvel. Trump is a wild boy, man. All I know is that he's using us without permission. Um, we sent the, you know, the, the cease and desist. Really? He don't give a fuck. Nah. When, does, when does Trump care about the goddamn law and doing things the right way? Kamala used me without uh, asking my permission. But she didn't put you on TV. She did. And it's not a campaign ad. She did. It's a difference. This motherfucker. It's not she a campaign. It's not a campaign ad. She used me no, in she her used campaign. Me. Can we talk about that for a second? <laughs> no, how much you get paid? Yo, yeah, I said, <laughs> I said as a joke. I was like, I was like, they used me, but they licensed it, so they had to give me 50 grand. And then on the pod, they're like, what'd you do with it? And I was like, I donated to Donald J. Trump, right? They did license you? They did it for real? No. no. But oh. listen, this is how, this is, <laughs> this how this is how desperate Desperate people are for headlines. The next day, there's a headline to an article. Kamala campaign pays comedian Andrew Schultz $50,000. That's why we can't just say <laughs> shit. This is why I never, ever wanted brilliant idiots to be anything but us. I wanted it to always be niche. I told y'all that. I told y'all this from I told y'all this 11 years ago. Why couldn't this just be our little honeycomb hideout? We had a we had our few million listeners listening every month. Still do for 11, 12 years, however long it's been. We but now perfect. you bringing all of these people in, misconstruing us. They misconstruing us. You know what? No, no. They con- they're construing us. Huh? We misconstrue, and they're just construing we say shit that don't make no sense that we don't care about. Yes, but what's construing me? <laughs> I don't know. I never use that word. I never, I never <laughs> use it without the miss in front of it. But that's all I'm saying. It seems like they're we doing some come construing. here and just say shit. Yes. It's called the brilliant idiots. Yes. Why did y'all run with that as a headline? <laughs> that's why we got to give them more headlines. Just fuck it. Huh? Just fuck it. Man, fuck it. <laughs> I'm voting for Kamala. Fuck it. Now you say your part. I'm voting for Kamala. <laughs> I'm voting for Kamala too. Let's go, baby. That's what I'm talking Damn. about. Imagine we have him. Okay. So that, uh, I'm voting for Tell J. Trump. Clip it. Put it out. You think you, he wouldn't? Say again? You think they wouldn't? Oh, they come cool. That shit is so crazy, man. And it's so fucking annoying. Because the crazy part about that commercial. And by the way, we broke the, We talked about it here. Mm. But we, and we broke it down. I was like, yo, the commercial is an effective commercial. Mm. And all I did was repeat what the commercial said. What'd you say? Because she wanted I, to pay to chop off cocks in prison or whatever, right? I, I'm not saying it no more because I don't want to be <laughs> I don't want to be used in the ad. But, but I was just repeating what the ad said. The crazy part is that we talked about it last time we were here on Brilliant Idiots a couple weeks ago. Her answer, pull it up from Fox News, is exactly yeah. the right answer. It's the law. And guess who else it was the law under? Donald Trump. Damn. The only thing Donald Trump added to the law was the word necessary. So if you're an inmate in prison and you have to have a surgery, you get the surgery. Only thing Donald Trump added was the word necessary. Yeah, to but it. is is trans surgery necessary? Like in it's your not just, it's not though? just that though. It's like uh, hair transplants are fucking. That's not necessary. A hair transplant? I don't fucking know. We're giving Turkish hairlines to prisoners. <laughs> I have no That's idea. crazy. Hold on. I There's it bald up. people free. I, actually, when I was reading the article about uh, Trump. It explained it all in there. Hold on. <laughs> you guys are crazy. You know, We're not, yeah. No, no play, don't play that, that ad. Play that, play that one play where they talk about ad. chopping them cocks off. I, with I, I, no, don't play scissors. the ad. I want 50 grand like Schultz got. Yo, you got to, you know, set your price, bro. I actually want more. Set your he price. He owes me a lot. So what happens with that? You sent the cease and desist. They're still running the ad. Now what? Nothing. That's so, it. Not a motherfucking <laughs> thing happens. You know what I mean? Court. Like, yeah, yeah. Go to court with the See, president. Look, <laughs> under Son, Trump, that's fire. Look, under Trump, U.S. prisons offered gen- gender affirming care. The Trump administration's approach is notable in light of a campaign ad that slams Vice President Kamala Harris for supporting taxpayer-funded transgender surgeries for prisoners and migrants. Trump did the same thing. Only thing Trump added was the word necessary. But let me find out Trump is rainbow gang too. I, I, it's not even that. It's just the law. 
Yeah, but necessary oh, that's what is a big Transgender difference. offenders may require individual counseling and emotional support. Medical care may include pharmaceutical interventions, cross-gender hormone therapy, hair removal, and surgery if indiv- individualized assessment indicates surgical intervention is applicable. By the way, it was under Obama, too. The statement in part reflected guidelines that officials in the Obama administration released. It's the law. So it's like, there's the thing I love about politics. I don't think we need to do surgeries on them. I think you can maintain their hormone treatments. Well, like you should maintain someone's, uh, you know, fucking if they're taking a statin for their heart or whatever while they're in prison. But you don't have to chop off their cocks because they feel like they want to be a woman. I don't know if that's what they're doing. Well, then don't based do off. It. Yeah. Based off reading this article, I don't think I don't know. If, I don't get that. That's what we're doing. Like even it says that the most significant change the Trump administration made in the treatment guidelines after it took over was the addition of the word necessary, which created a higher but not insurmountable barrier to federally funded surgeries. Hmm. I don't know. I don't to be honest with you. I don't know what the fuck none of this shit. I means. like that word. What? Necessary. I think so, too, <laughs> because it makes it. No, I do. Clip it, clip I do. It. I do like the word necessary because you, you really have to, you know, study the situation and examine the situation and make mm-hmm. sure that it's necessary. Exactly. Right. Yeah. I don't have a problem with it. I, I mean, what Jada Kiss said, Jada Kiss said, I knew people who used to go to prison just to get their teeth fixed. Ooh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now you got people go to prison just to get their dick snipped. Damn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Damn, I'm just bro. saying, Do you man. Got, but, like, what are your choices of vaginas? Like, is it some government-issued vagina? The government cheese vagina would be that, crazy. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I don't know if you want that <laughs> one. The vagina that come in the white box. Oh, no. The generic brand Just vagina. a generic-ass vagina. You can't even choose the color. It's one color. It don't even got no pink on the inside. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> inside and out is the same. That's That's crazy. That is just fucking crazy. Oh, my God. Yeah, you don't know want the government cheese vagina, Taylor? The government cheese vagina Come would on, be crazy. Wouldn't that be crazy? Why you got that face? Like, you're not grossed out, too. Because it makes it seem like it comes in a box. Like, yeah, what else is it going to come in? They Don't they, like, cut the dick and, like, turn it into a vagina? The surgery? I don't know how they do it. I heard they had water and whip that shit up. No, they have to, because technically, <laughs> technically, y'all all like baking soda, <laughs> baking soda. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to explain it. I'm going to let y'all go. Listen, first of all, you don't have to explain anything to the two greatest political pundits <sighs> walking to face it. How do you feel being okay. in a room with us right yeah, now? Exactly. This is crazy. Like, we speak to presidents. <laughs> we speak to presidents and we get to talk to you. Like, how do you feel about that? I enjoy... Uh, Anyways. You know what's so funny? I enjoyed reading... Article. There was a good article that Vulture wrote, and it talked about you and Theo Vaughn's approaches to Trump. Mm, I don't see it. Oh no, that was good. It was it was it was a good article because you know it's it just I, I guess they they call all the all the bro podcast. Yeah, I think that's their pejorative for having a male. Fan yeah, base. I don't yeah. I don't think that's a I don't think that's a fair assessment. But it's just it was I mean just, it is it is like mostly male listeners. But I think they use the term bro uh, to like uh, be a little bit uh, to undermine the audience a little bit. Mm. Like it's 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 like their version of calling like your fan base ghetto. Yeah, urban, urban, no urban. urban. No, but ghetto. Ghetto, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Urban or calling it black saying. is fine. Yeah. But if you want to be like, hey, they're only this class or only this version, yeah, yeah, we're gonna yeah, use the term bro. Yeah. But I think we gotta take back bro. Being a bro is fire. I don't have a problem with that. You know, but I was I was interested in what I saw like different articles because you talked about this last week. Hmm. And then when I heard the podcast for myself and then I was reading the different articles, it started to make sense to me. You really do have people that'll watch one thing and come to two different conclusions about it. And neither one of them is wrong because it's literally just based on perception. And that's what art is. Like, whether you believe it or not, these conversations that we have are a, are a form of art. Hmm. So once you put this art out, people watch the art and it's no longer yours. It's not yours. The only thing that matters is your intention. So if you believe Charlemagne is a Democratic shill, you watch the interview. That's all you That's what you're going to see. Gonna see. Yeah. If you believe... Schultz is MAGA. You watch the interview, that's what you're going to believe. But the thing people I like are the people who don't know us really at all. Mm. And so then you're looking and it's like, I see things. 
comedian laughs in Donald Trump's face. Yeah. Andrew yeah. Schultz, the comedian that embarrassed Donald Trump. I know that wasn't your intention. Yeah. You were just sitting there having a conversation. I know Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. So in my mind, I'm like, Andrew, Akash, they want the joke. They're going for the laugh. Yeah. They're going for the humor. Yeah. All they're looking for is the funny. Yeah. And Trump is going to give you the funny. Yeah. So when you're laughing, yeah. you're not trying to embarrass him. That was the craziest. You thought yeah. it was funny. That's the craziest thing about the the interview is that like somehow both sides loved it. And they lauded me as like this hero. The left was like, he's embarrassed. He's laughing right at Trump. And the right was like, finally, he's somebody who's humanizing Trump or whatever. My, my, this was my take on the interview. Like one, I've never been a gotcha guy. Like I think the gotcha shit is, is, is like narcissistic. I go in there I and I try to get him. My base pats my back, but then nothing changes. He doesn't think about policy differently. He doesn't think about the things that I actually care about. It's just for me to get patted on the back and people go, yeah, you held him to the fire. The world doesn't change. Culture doesn't change. Yeah. Yeah. The way I approached it was this. There are, what are the things that I really care about in this election? And there were three. Protecting IVF. Obviously, that's how we were able to have a child. So I don't want the Roe v. Wade thing to affect IVF. And it has in certain places. Can I say one thing about yeah, that? Yeah. I thought it was brilliant. I thought the Baron Trump shit was brilliant. Thank you. Because it, 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 is, it is a way for him to have to really sit back and question like, uh-oh. Damn. Yeah. Because 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 nobody believes in abortion until you get the wrong person pregnant. Damn. Yeah. You, know, you, know like, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Like all of them won't roll me away to be gone until it's like, whoa, wait a minute. You got your little mistress pregnant, buddy. Uh -oh. Yo, little Baron just got this little freak now in New York, New York University pregnant. Like now it's like, whoa. So I thought that was brilliant. And it was just a joke. So it was like, you don't have to take it that seriously. But it's, it gives you something to think about. But it is something to think Absolutely. about. Absolutely. So the IBF thing was most important. And then obviously the deportation thing was concerning to me because it's like i'm like deport people who are you know criminals murders 100 percent, but there are also people who have come here and like i've worked with them for years in different jobs that i've had they've worked for me like they're great people that want to experience the american dream and yes maybe they went about it illegally i understand but if they've been they've been here for five ten years maybe we could have some empathy for the situation they're in the situation they came from and if they're trying to be good hardworking, upstanding american citizens maybe there's a pathway to citizenship so I was like, let's create a separation between criminals that are here, mm -hmm. murderers that are here, and people fucking busting their ass and really trying to live the American dream. And I thought he was empathetic to that. It was the IVF, it was that, and then there was uh, one more. What was the other thing? Uh, oh, foreign Oh, war. no, another foreign thing wars. you said that I liked. Foreign wars. Foreign wars. What was the foreign Just wars foreign, foreign policy in terms of like wars. I don't want endless war. Right? And, and oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. My concern absolutely. was, uh, in a lot of times also, is like the idea of like a nuclear holocaust. Like we all kill each other with nukes. And he's like, of the presidents that I've heard talk about it, absolutely. seemingly the most concerned about agree. nuclear war. And I agree. those are the things that I wanted to really talk to him about. And the way that I looked at it and my positioning of it, this is the whole thing is, if I can get him comfortable where he doesn't feel like he's being defensive... I can tell him what I really care about in America right now. How often does a human being get the chance to tell potentially the leader of the free world, the leader of your country, what you really care about? I could do that in a gotcha way, and then he'll be like, ah, fuck this guy, who cares? Or I could maybe do it in a way where he goes, hey, wow, that guy actually made some sense, and maybe we should have some empathy for these situations. Like, that was my take, and I feel like, I got what I wanted out of it. Whatever anybody else wants to frame it as, that's theirs. But that's what was important. I, I think you did a great job. And I think another thing you said in there was when you pushed back on him when he kept saying America's terrible. Oh, I, mm. I that, sorry. That was the other thing. I love this country. It is an amazing country. And I don't like it when politicians or anybody else just shits on it constantly. It doesn't make me feel good. I'm proud of it. You see who doesn't do that? Who? Kamala. In the Fox News article, in the interview, she pushed back on Brett Baer. She was like, I'm not going to call the American people stupid mm -hmm. just because they just they, they want to vote for Trump. I'm not going to call them stupid. And then she's like, like that's something Trump would do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which is true. So are they misguided, the 50 percent? Are they stupid? What, oh, what is God, it? I would never say that about the American people. And in fact, if you listen to Donald Trump, if you watch any of his rallies, he's the one who tends to demean and belittle and diminish the American people, he's the one who talks about an enemy within, within, an enemy within, talking about the American people, suggesting he would turn the American military on the American people. 
Yeah. What but I, I like her just saying that. Like I and the and the point that I was trying to communicate right there is like we are proud of this country. We still live here. We're still a part of it. You can't just shit on it nonstop without us starting to get defensive. There are things that we can make better. What I basically told him is like, we like hope. Americans are hopeful people. We come from people who left destitute situations, took boats fucking here, and and literally just showed up like, I think it's going to work out. So we like hope. If you tell us that the American dream is going to happen here, we will fucking believe it. Sell us on the American dream. Don't just don't sell us on, hey, your neighborhoods are shit and everything is overrun. And That's how Obama came up talk, I, talking about hope, hope and change. We love hope. You know, it's interesting, right? Put some AC in here, though, be, bro. Yeah, put some AC, please. Because out of everything that Trump does and says, that's like the thing that I can't believe America isn't pushing back on the most. How unpatriotic he can be. Well, I think that's what... I think this messaging isn't as effective as MAGA initially was. And he even taught in the conversation, he even goes, yeah, we did have another thing called CAG, Keep America Great. And... That was his way of almost like acknowledging, I hear what you're saying, like, we want to inspire, but I think he's also like, uh, people probably feel like the country is shit, so me making them feel heard in that might be effective, but what is always most effective is the dream, especially with Americans. The dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, want yeah. hope that it's going to be great. The American dream. And he sold that first time around. Yeah. You know? Same, I get it. Same thing with Barack did. You know, it's just interesting. Like, just even going back to what we was talking about, like, when you watch the media, because everything you just said just now, from your perspective, from your intention to me, is what matters the most. Right. What is your intention when you go into an interview? Like, my intention yeah. is always just to have the best conversation. To what you just said, I feel like that with politicians, entertainers, whoever. Yeah. I'm just a guy who who's lucky enough to be able to talk to people that we normally talk about, Yep. right? And so when you look at uh, somebody and they'll do the headline, like uh, if they don't know you're a comedy podcast, they're like, oh, they're just in there yucking it up with Trump, isn't it? It's a comedy podcast. Also, so what if we were? That's your approach. Yeah, like what if that is the approach? What if I think that's what they want you to crash most... out? You know, it's the crash out era. That's not you're not supposed specific. to have conversations. You're supposed to have crash. You're supposed to crash out. Exactly. But like, that's like, such short-term greed. Very. Like, you get a few views, a few clicks right Very. now, but you don't affect culture, you don't affect the world. Now, nah, all my favorite interviewers ever, historically, knew how to have conversation. Even if the conversation got a little contentious, you know what I'm saying? Like, I like what the New York Times said about me and Kamala's conversation, me and the vice president's conversation. They said it was friendly, but pointed. Yeah, you push back on things. That's what you want. And I loved it. I thought, we listened to the whole thing and listened to live All of us at Flagrant. We recorded Flagrant, and then afterwards we listened to it. And you were phenomenal. I I understand that you wanted the platform where there are other people asking questions. The only pushback that I would give on the whole interview, and I understand that it was geared towards Black America, but I didn't know that it was geared towards Black America. So I'm coming in, listening to it, going like, we're 14 days out or whatever from the election. Like, why are we just talking about Black America? Like, tell me what you're going to do for all America. Tell me what you're going to do. Like, my daughter's not Black. What, what what is how are, yeah. how are you going to affect the world for her and but i understand this was in detroit and maybe you were framing it within that lens i yeah. would just like to see you interview her again I, every time i want to see it because i think you won you don't fluff her. Like, you'll make jokes with her, you'll ask her questions, and then you'll give some pushback, and then you get to see a better version of her. It's like we said on this pod. She does not do good with the fake puff interviews. No. She does way better when you ask her a serious question, and then you push, like, even the fucking Fox one. That was great. I feel like she was better on that I than any of the great. liberal outlets that was, just fluff her she, shit. You said something to me, man, uh, I don't know if it was a couple weeks ago, but when you said it, I was like, yo, you're absolutely right. You have to be saying it on a podcast. Kamala's great when she's angry, bro. Let her be angry. When she gets upset, when she gets upset, she's great, mm-hmm. bro. I think she's a prosecutor. You know what I'm saying? She, <laughs> uh, uh, Akash goes, she's an Indian woman. She never lost a debate. And tell Akash. He's married to an yeah, Indian right, woman. Right, he right. knows. He's right. She is Indian and Jamaican. I get it. Yes. But no, she's is she's really good in that. Those heated shit when, like, what the fuck? When she stopped Brett Barron, was like, Brett, Brett, cut yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah. You know Oof. good and goddamn well, she didn't say that, but you know good and goddamn well that ain't the clip I'm talking about. Brett had to come back the next day and apologize. And apologize. That's but, funny. But, that, but he, Brett knew what he was doing. But yeah, that's because it wasn't live. But they always know what they're doing, but it's rare that somebody actually pushes back. Right and calls there in them the out. moment. Yeah. 
You got to go right there in the moment. They think that they can get it right past her because when she's in these puff pieces, everybody's acting. Mm -hmm. Colbert's acting and she's acting. Yeah. We're all doing, it's almost like before the podcast, we go, hey, let's have this conversation and talk about the whole conversation that me and you try to recreate it. You'll feel phony in it. I don't know if Colbert's acting. That's that's really who he is. Oh, okay, fair. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I don't think Colbert's acting. I get what you, I'm, I, I can see other places. Uh, not not Colbert, but I, actually, I don't know. Maybe maybe Colbert in the fact that it's just so supportive. And it's Colbert, just Colbert, so, Colbert is he like He wants a, her to win. He wants her to win, and it's, a, it's still a late night show. So it's still things I have to do from a late night show perspective. I like the view. Yeah. You go on the view, the view is going to do the same thing. The view is going to, you know, wink at her and all that. Like, they're, they're going to do that. Yeah. Brett Bear is probably the place she's going to go to get, like, the most pushback. You know, like it's going to be all pushback. Yeah, and like, she's better with Like that. all pushback. You know, me, I'm going to have the conversation and, I, and there's things that I'm going to push back on, like like the border, right? Yeah. Because I just like, to your point, I said it, like, why can't we can't just admit what we got wrong at the border? But doesn't the Biden administration have to take some blame for the border, though? A lot of the blame? Because, I mean, the first three years, y'all did get a lot of things wrong with the border. No, Charlemagne, within hours of being inaugurated, the first bill we passed before we did the Inflation Reduction Act, before we did the Bipartisan Infrastructure Act, before we did the, the, the Safer Communities Act to deal with gun violence, first thing we dropped was a bill to fix the broken immigration system. Yo, I, I'm that. telling you, and this is how... From a political perspective, they said it's bad. And I thought, I thought this was kind of unanimous amongst all of us that were listening. Al, you speak mm -hmm. you know, differently if you, if you feel different. But really impressed with her like her knowledge nuanced information all the pushback that she could give whatever questions and then answering the questions i feel like she was in good spirits like everything sounded good again it's not the most entertaining but she sounds like she knows what the fuck she's talking about mm -hmm. that's what i got the border thing it just was a lack of there was a lack of like accountability or even a feeling of yeah we got to change something it didn't feel like she even felt that we need to change. And then she, she answered it like a politician. She answered it like a politician. And yeah. then when that happened, my gut reaction was, oh shit, was the rest of the stuff she said also denying what people are actually feeling? Like I started to lose faith in the rest because she seemed like she couldn't just answer honestly this one thing that I think we can all agree on. We got to do something about the border. It's a simple answer. The answer is, hey, the border's fucked up. Right? Yeah. And it's been fucked up for a long time under a lot of different administrations. And it's going to take an actual piece of bipartisan legislation, not executive orders, putting band-aids on it, whether it's from Trump, whether it's from Biden. We got to come together and create real legislation to fix the border. And then and if she said that and then she was like, and you know what we need to do? And I, we should have done this during the Biden administration. And maybe this is where we separate. But like, because it's such a severe issue, we probably put it, should have put up executive orders until we reached a bipartisan, you know. They did, though. Then say that. What I'm saying is. I wonder if people understand that, though. No, I, that's, but, that's the other thing I'd be they, wondering. they did that recently. No, no, they did it in the last couple of years. Because uh -uh. it's, it's been like, the, I think the first year was like really, really, really bad. I remember yeah. watching those videos on CNN and it was like, whoa. And was it bad because they changed something from Trump? That's yes, they yeah. did. I so forgot exactly if it's what it bad because they changed something from Trump, just say, hey, we made this change from the Trump administration. It was wrong. We messed up. We should we've been trying to correct it. We have done corrective measures and we will continue to correct it even further in my administration. You say that to me. I believe everything she said before. And that, you know, the problem with politics, because you're not wrong. The problem with politics is that nobody wants to say anything the, the other side did, did was right mm -hmm. because it's like you're giving them a political yep. win. Yep. It's the same thing with the bipartisan border bill that they created. Republicans were all ready to do it because everybody's on the same yep. page that this needs to be fixed. But then Trump comes and goes, no, don't give them a political win. Yep. Wait till which I get back in up. office, which is fucked up, which is fucked up. And and a thing they don't mention a lot is the reason why Biden undid all those executive orders in the first place is because so many people were con complaining about the harsh conditions at the border that Trump was putting they them were, in. They were like, complaining about them under Obama. I know, they but like about them under the, Trump. the caravans all... and splitting of families it's, and all that. It's so been happening. he got in office thinking that he's going to do something good. He's like, hey, I'm going to undo all these things that are splitting up families and all that at the border. But then it created another problem. So count yeah. it in that. So say yeah, that. Hey, yeah. we had good intentions. We didn't want to split yeah. up the families. We didn't want to put these people through horrible conditions that are trying to leave horrible conditions. Mm. In doing that, we've created a border that 
doesn't have enough security. There are way too many people coming in. It's unchecked. And there are people who are criminals and blah, 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 that are coming into America. That's not safe. That's not right. We have taken measures to correct it. And we are going to further in my administration, take measures to correct it and perfect that border. That's going to be the best border you've ever seen in your entire life. We understand what we have to do and we are going to continue to do it. You say that, I believe all the other stuff you said. Exactly. She just kind of- they, they can't admit when they're wrong. They can't. And they that's can't the problem. Like, oh, no, 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 no. Suck, you're right. You're right. It's crazy. And that it's shit like, sucks. It's crazy. It is crazy, man. And it's, I'm telling you, perspective is crazy. Like, who you think, but who you then think? they yeah. look at Trump, who never admits he's never Ever. done anything never wrong. Never once. And he's winning. I just don't so like the double standards. Like, well, he's why not would they, Nobody's winning. Currently. No, but I mean, like, yeah. he's still doing very well, still has nah, a he's, control he's, over his party. He's winning. Because he's shit. never he admitted said, he's, said, he's ever been again. wrong said, ever said, once in his again. life. He's winning. Not only has Donald Trump never admitted he's wrong, you know, people, it's funny, right? They'll be like, crazy. Kamala, the vice president, doesn't answer any questions. I'm like, she doesn't answer questions. But meanwhile, Trump was on flagrant. Trump literally said, I weave. If I do this thing called the weave, Fire. <laughs> I start here, Fire. then I go all the way over here. And if Fire. I want to come back to it, I come back Fire. to it. But I take you all the way over here. But Kamala so, don't weave funny. But, but that's my point. And it, she don't call still, out her own weave. But it, it's still question dodging is what I'm saying. Yeah. Politicians do it. But he made it funny. He made it funny. You got to make it funny. But, but, but I, I, just don't, I just don't like the double standard is what I'm yeah. saying. You oh, can't wait, say... Oh, oh, you can't wait, Kamala weaves, it's her hair. <laughs> Disgusting. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> see? <laughs> what is not... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see how it is. I see <laughs> how it is. <laughs> how unfair is this? Oh, oh, man. Oh, man that oh you is. taking off two of you and Chris. The whole production <laughs> team taking off. God damn. You sitting in a room with two men that have swayed political elections. Listen. This is funny, right? So swag. I talk. So I surf. I swag. I surf. <laughs> so listen. Yo, this so is what the American public is doing every time we talk to every a time. I swag. I surf. I swag. I surf. <laughs> now we're popping. Da, 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 da. So listen. So the New York Times said the interview was friendly but pointed. But here goes Fox News. Yeah, here they go. Charlemagne presses Harris on whether Ooh. she deserves a lot of blame for the border crisis. Bam, 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 I'm bam, like, bam. what? Bam, 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 bam. New York Post. Charlemagne God calls out Harris for question filibuster, doing a lot of things wrong with border. Uh. An awkward town hall. Uh. <laughs> like, uh. But that's my point. Who do you believe? Honestly, this no is what, fucking body. This is, this is what I learned from the interview. Right. I used to think that, uh, and I talked about this on Flagrant, but like I used to think that people were, uh, I was more cynical. I used to think everybody was kind of grifting, right? They're like, okay, how do I just feed something to my base in order for them to, uh, you know, watch it and get the most clicks? And there's a lot of people doing it. There's tons of people doing it. I used to think that was everybody. Now I genuinely believe after seeing the reaction to the Trump interview is that you, there are certain people who are maybe like the culture curators who genuinely see things through whatever lens they have on in their glasses. Right. So like the Republicans are genuinely watching it going, okay, finally he's humanizing Trump, blah, blah, blah. Then the Democrats, some of these people are like, okay, this is great. He's actually making fun of them and he's getting his points across or whatever. They put out their articles. Once those articles get views or their videos get views, then the fucking grifter rats come in. And they go, ooh, there's views in this. I can sell that same headline yeah, to my yeah, fan yeah, base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, there's views in this. I can sell their same. Yeah. And the reason I know that that's the case is because they all use the same headline. This Every yeah, left yeah, article yeah, was the yeah, same yeah, headline. Yeah, every yeah. right was the same headline. So I do think there is some authenticity. I do think people see what they already believe. I do think everybody knows they're lying, though. Ooh, even so. the first people, I think they see what they genuinely no, believe. No, I think the reason I say I think everybody knows they're lying because I think about... Remember when Fox News and those emails got leaked during that fucking uh the trial they lost? I can't remember the fucking oh, uh, the trial uh, they lost. The, the, the all Dominion the, uh, Dominion lawsuit, trial, yeah. the, the voting you, vote, you, voting thing. You saw all of the pundits were were talking the truth mm. about Trump, right? Like, oh, he's crazy. This is how yeah. he, like, but on TV, it's a different well, ball I game. would say I would say mm. TV, I would say pundits mm. are a little different. I think pundits definitely lean more towards the grift because they're literally like they're employees of a news station that has to have an angle. Dang. And they're not free to have their own angle. Like but, if you're on Fox, it is your job on Fox to take the angle of the network. But the person that's standing out the most on Fox, the person that's getting the most love right now, the person that, you know, they're, they're naming one of the most powerful people in media is Jessica Tarlov. 
And she is the person on there pushing back on all against all I of know, that shit. I know Jessica. I know her because I used to do some of the Fox shows with her. Oh, yeah. And I always thought that she was brought on as kind of like to be the to be the opposite. Yeah, she's a liberal. Gotcha. Like, it's works. It's working for her. But it yeah, is. Yeah, but yeah. she is the liberal voice on Fox, yeah. so that there's someone to argue with, someone to push back against. Gotcha, gotcha, and gotcha. they understand the value of that on the network. And so that she's always been a liberal. She's a staunch liberal. She's not at all Republican, but she is. But worked. objective though. I, yeah, I'm not saying she's not objective. I like, I like Jessica, but like her view at Fox is supposed to be liberal. I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's got to be hard. To be the the the, the hen in that wolf's den, yeah. Oh my God! Like to know everybody's gonna come at you, but she be she be handling it. You know what I mean? I, I Makes you stronger. But then is she really liberal, or she just knows? Hey, this is the job I've been hired to do, so I just have to. I, I always really I liberal. always yeah. thought that she was authentically okay. liberal, especially since she's like on this show and giving pushback to these people. Like they're arguing with all of her points of view, and she's arguing back with them. I actually think it's a really smart thing to do. Like especially if you're a conservative network, have another voice there. The crazy part is you don't know she's liberal if you don't watch Fox, meaning that Fox has such a perception. Any white yeah. person, any white woman you see on Fox, you think is going to have yeah. a certain POV. Yeah. I did a uh, Piers Morgan with But she's a brunette. Jessica. She's a brunette. That's the right. The brunettes on Fox Ooh, always have a different POV. You might be right. Oh, Kennedy. Sh- Kennedy. Yeah. Jessica, you're right. Oh, yeah. shit. You're right. You, after, you might <laughs> be right. The blondes. You might the blondes be right. Fall in the blondes fall online. Yeah, the blondes are very stepped for yeah. the wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Someone look that up because that's crazy. No, that, I, I, that's I did, a case. Uh, that's I did crazy. Piers Morgan with Jessica. It's brilliant idiots. No, but that's going to be great. Yeah, I did Piers Morgan with Jessica. I had Jessica on Breakfast Club. You know, Kennedy, that's the homie. That's that's my that's my people's people. But yeah, it's just interesting, man. Like, all of this is just so interesting to watch uh i i really like studying the media yeah. even though i am media i like to look at how different people view things and why they view things a certain way and by the way i get it i understand it all across the board mm-hmm. i totally get why people see things the way they want to see things of course because it's literally like you know some things you might be doing for clicks and some things you might be doing for engagement some things you might truly believe but most things that's just truly your your perspective Bro, there are guys yeah. out there that don't notice feet <laughs> I see a girl. I'm like looking at the feet. Right? It's some guy that only notice ass. Only notice ass. Only notice ass. That's politics. You're right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You're looking if, at one thing. Not exactly. You're right. If you're, you're a right. Democrat, you're gonna see gay in everything you see. <laughs> you know, you're gonna see, you're gonna see as much gay stuff as possible. I don't know. If you're a Republican, obviously you like hot bitches and you like having sex with them a lot. <laughs> but you're secretly gay. Yeah. Yes. That's <laughs> why that, that's why they overcompensate. <laughs> An elephant Yo, never forgets. Shout out to see, I'm about to say something and they're gonna use it for that. So I'm not gonna do say it. it. Nope. I'm gonna rephrase it. Come on, come on, come on. Mag, I saw Mag. Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Making it, doing outreach to the LGBTQ community. <laughs> to have play it, play it when Trump was doing dick talk. I'm like, one episode with goddamn Andrew Show. Which one? One flagrant episode. Ooh. Pull up Donald Trump Where talking about Arnold Palmer's meat. Oh, yeah, let me see that. I didn't know Arnold Palmer was stacked like that. Me neither. I want to see now. I, I thought mean, he had I want to see that club. I didn't know you he, thought he had a putter? I thought he had a putter. I didn't know he had the nine I thought he had a nine iron. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know he had the you know, goddamn you know nine crazy? iron. We, we know so little about golf that nine iron, I don't even think is that big. I, I think that's kind of <laughs> nah, similar that to that shit like nine inches. No. Jeez, come on, the, What's the Look one it up, yo. it's got like a ball on the Look end of the club? Up, <laughs> Google Aaron Palmer's nine iron. Yo, <laughs> why would I Google that? Yo, I ain't messing up my algorithm for that shit. Images. No. Go to images. <laughs> what you mean? Go to images. Google Arnold Palmer's nine iron. <laughs> they used to call him Arnie Third Leg. Yo, that was the slickest <laughs> play for the LGBTQ community I've seen this whole election cycle. Come on, bro. Let me Look see. Look at this. This is for no reason. Unprompted. Dick top. Let me see that. Let me see the boy. Let me Arnold see the Palmer boy. Arnold Palmer was all man. And I say that in all due respect to women and I love women. But this guy, this guy, this is a guy that was all man. This man was strong and tough. And I refuse to say it, but when he took showers with the other pros, they came out of there, they said, oh, my God. That's unbelievable. (laughs) I had to say it. I had to say it.
<laughs> yo, yo. Nah, yo, pause. keep that same energy, yo. Pause, pause. Yeah, pause. pause. Exactly, pause. Yeah. He's just exactly. having fun now. Pause, pause. Yo, son, he's just having fun. Like, at this point, I feel like he's done so many interviews, so many speeches, everything. He's just like, nah, we just got to go up there and just rip, play some music. Because he's over it. I told I, I y'all this a month I don't think ago. he's over it, bro. He doesn't <laughs> want to be oh, no, no. there he anymore. Want, he wants to win, but I also think he's like, well, we don't got to answer these questions over and over again. Let's talk about Arnold Palmer's yeah. meat. You know how I know he, he knows he can do no whatever more? the fuck he wants. He, he danced for 30 minutes. 30 minutes because he doesn't want to be there anymore. He's, playing box. he's like, what do I got to do? No. His people love it. It's a media day. He's like, what do I got to do? He's acting crazier than Joe ever act. Did you watch the, the Al, did you watch the Al Smith roast? The Al Smith, the whatever? The I did. Catholic I dinner? did. He had five good ones. Ooh. Some of them didn't slap though. Ooh. Some of them, some of them looked like he was actually tired. Who no. For me, what I thought was the best thing about it is he stayed in the moment. When it bombs, he talked about it. Like he didn't try to, oh, he yeah. stayed present throughout the whole thing. So when the joke bombed, he would reflect on it. Like when that. it was a really like off color joke. He, he at one point he goes, "That's, that's a nasty. nasty. That's a joke. nasty. Who joke. are these idiots that wrote this? That's a nasty joke." You know what I didn't like about that shit, man? I didn't like that fucking Chuck Schumer was just sitting by him, cooling out. Like because they was homies. I, I, but I don't like that. He, he loves him, and I don't like that. Don't call somebody a threat to democracy and all of this other stuff. But you just sitting there yucking it up. Like this ain't a podcast. Oh, like you, you. Oh, you believe politicians? Yeah, Charlotte, oh, you know that's bullshit. so cute. No, 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 no. Oh my no, god. No. No. Do you know Santa Claus don't? No, come? no, no, no. <laughs> Santa Listen, Claus don't. Eat okay. Cookies well, in the middle of the night. Well, I tell you this. Mommy and daddy do that. Let Trump get uh let Trump win this election. And when you start seeing some of your favorite politicians in handcuffs, you tell me if it's just politics. But for sexual things or <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> <laughs> Who you wanna see? Who you wanna see in some handcuffs? <laughs> Pete Buddha Junk? By the way, if Pete Buddha Junk would have said that about Arnold Palmer's meat, y'all be asking for Pete to get arrested. No, I wouldn't. Yeah, I he say would he know. knows what he's talking about. He would know. <laughs> he would. He probably mixing on a Palmer. You don't think? <laughs> <laughs> what if Donald Trump would have said that? Oh, I'd have liked to been the lemonade on top of that tea. <laughs> I'd have liked to been the lemonade President. on top of that tea. President. <laughs> <laughs> so he laughed at himself. He said, "The other person walk out of that shower. That was unbelievable." <laughs> <laughs> He's talking about Arnold Palmer's dick God at a rally. Damn. God damn. And y'all think January 6th was bad? Can I? <laughs> play, uh, come on. Play, uh, come on. Play, play some jokes from the roast, Taylor. You had it up a little while ago. Let's hear some of these. Let's hear some of these jokes from the roast. <laughs> this is a Catholic roast, too. I used to think the Democrats were crazy for saying that men have periods. But then I met Tim Waltz. <laughs> Well, I'd better wrap up because Mayor Adams told me earlier that I needed to make this one very quick, especially the city has reserved this room for a large group of illegal aliens coming in from Texas. <laughs> There's a group called White Dudes for Harris. Have you seen this? White Dudes for Harris. Anybody know? Are some of you here? White Dudes for Harris? Doesn't sound like it. But I'm not worried about them at all because their wives and their wives' lovers are all voting for me. Fire, Jack. A major issue in this race is child care, and Kamala has put forward a concept of a plan. A lot of people don't like it. The only piece of advice I would have for her in the event that she wins would be not to let her husband, Doug, anywhere near the nannies. Just keep him away. <laughs> That's a nasty one. <laughs> Chuck Schumer is here looking very glum. Look. <laughs> Doesn't it look lovely? It looks lovely. <laughs> just funny, dude. But look on the bright side, Chuck, considering how woke your party has become. If Kamala loses, you still have a chance to become the first woman president. Oh, shit. <laughs> Oh, Let me tell you something, man. Oh, these are bars, shit. bro. Let me tell you something about America. That's yeah. Great. <laughs> you want the reason, and, I, and I said this, I, I said this to yeah. the vice president in the interview. <laughs> You know, we keep saying Trump is a threat to democracy, but he doesn't get treated like a threat to democracy. Mm. You know who got treated like a threat to democracy? Who? Sean P. Diddy Combs. Because <laughs> <laughs> when you a real threat, they lock you up and figure this shit out later. Wow. Like, 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 but that's my point. The reason people don't believe any of the rhetoric that is said about Trump 
is because of stuff like this. But that's how hyperbolic politicians are. They just say the craziest shit about each other. We're supposed to believe it. It's a fight promo. And then afterwards, they hug in, they kiss in. It's yeah. no different than a fight where before the fight, you're talking crazy about someone's family, saying they're a pussy, all this. And afterwards, they hug in. And I respect you, bro. Yeah. I apologize. Yeah, but Trump says some wild shit, bro. Trump's talking about putting people in camps. Trump's talking about locking up journalists, locking up his political opponents. Do you have to use that type of rhetoric? You never had an article written about you where you're like, nah, we need to fucking lock these motherfuckers up. <laughs> about me? Yeah. What do you mean? Say it again. You never had someone write an article about you and you're like, man, I would lock this motherfucker up. Oh yeah, no, I've seen some shit like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna start leaning into it so much though. That's what I'm oh, talking I'm about. Start leaning into it so but that's much. what I'm talking yeah, about. Think Taylor. about the primaries. Like the primaries, they say that wow nah, shit about one another. It's different. It's different, hey, bro. I'm telling you, you it's different. Son, it's he, fucking he, different. He called dude's wife ugly. That's fighting words. Call who? That was probably like the yeah. one time I thought Trump might have been telling the truth. These you politicians can't say that about somebody. Why? Come on, son. <laughs> what? Come on. What? Even it, Listen, it's, like, it's like a. I thought it was it's too like far. It's like a baby. To... Even when you think it, you can't I say it. I thought it was too far until I saw her. Yo, no. Did he, so, ever, did he ever? Did he ever say? Did he ever say she's beautiful? Did he ever say that? <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. But that would be overcompensated. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like yeah, I love yeah. her for the person she is. You know, yeah. yo, that's yeah. just foul. That's yeah. crazy. You know, <laughs> y'all are assholes, bro. That's crazy. I saw somebody say that before. Though. Kamala needs some bars, bro. You gotta hit her up. Give her some bars. I think her best bars come when she is just having pushed on a the ropes. Yeah. yeah, on the ropes. I think that's when her best bar. She don't have bar like she. She's not a bar person, and I get it because you know you'll have people. I've I've heard people you know uh, that support her want to say yo she should say this and she should say it like that. I don't. If it's not in you, it's not in you. Because we keep comparing politicians to entertainers. We keep forgetting the good ones Donald are, Trump is an entertainer. Uh, Barack was an entertainer. Bill Clinton was an entertainer. Yeah. The good ones I don't are, think Bill was, I don't think Bill was George good George Bush was a fucking entertainer. He dude. was Riri. Yeah. He yeah. was yeah. bad boy yeah. Riri. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yo, what's wrong with you, Taylor? <laughs> Taylor, what's wrong with you? Me. You're talking to what's the two greatest political journalists of this era. Two. Two. God damn it. Y'all don't have no respect for what no we're respect. doing over here. Come here regular Tell wearing Crocs. You know, <laughs> you're wearing Crocs. You sit in front of us. Don't let, listen, don't let some network put us live during the election. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, election night. This could be Who Andy. Who wanted it? Andy Cohen and Who? Anderson Cooper. Who? Oh, shit. Who wanted it? Who, Who wanted it for election Who night? Who wanted election the night? The two greatest political pundits. Of this generation wow. on election night. Oh, what should Call we do? It. Who wants it? What should we do? <laughs> so, y'all should do that. What yeah, should we do? do? Y'all should go live. We gotta go live. state by Man, state. Funniest shit in the world, 2016. Andrew's in the group chat trolling the fuck out of every black person in the group chat. <laughs> every time a state comes in, Andrew's like, Whoa! <laughs> Andrew and I mean I'm not even gonna say who was in else was in the chat. You just got these guys just texting back. I think it might have just been three of us. Was who, it more than us? Who me? Who, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just kept texting back, and then at some point in the night, all you see is white men are back. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm sitting back looking like he is just fucking still hasn't gotten over that. Oh my They're god! Still sour about that to this day. Still sour about that to this day. You know what I mean? All right, guys, let's take a break for a second. I just want to say thank you to Squarespace for supporting this week's episode of the podcast. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time all in one place, all on your terms. Start a completely personalized website with the new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint. Choose from professionally curated layout and styling options to build a unique online presence from the ground up, tailored to your brand or business, and optimized for every device. Easily launch your website and get discovered with fast, get discovered fast with integrated options optimized SEO tools 
So you show up more often to more people and grow the way you want. With Fluid Engine, the next generation website editor for, uh, from Squarespace, it's never been easier for anyone to unlock unbreakable creativity. Choose your website starting point and customize and design detail with reimagined drag and drop technology for desktop or mobile. Stretch your imagination online with Fluid Engine. Include it in any Squarespace site. Right now, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That is squarespace.com slash idiots to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. This episode is also brought to you by Blue Chew. Hard dick season. Four seasons of the year are hard dick season with Blue Chew, Okay. Same active ingredient that's inside Viagra or Cialis, but this is the chew. This is the one that we rock with, the one that you're going to rock with, the one that we keep it up all night with, okay? Election night. I'm popping a bluey. I'm popping a bluey election night. I'm staying rock all through the results, not climaxing until you know when. <laughs> you know exactly when. So what you can do right now is you can get your first month free. You just got to pay $5 shipping, okay? You just go to bluechew.com, use the promo code IDIOTS, and you get your first month free. Just pay $5 shipping. Now let's get back to the show. Let's do some church announcements. Show T, what we got? Okay, update uh, for my uh, special taping, okay? Um, okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, wait, did I even t say what happened here? No. Okay, so basically, some of you guys might know this already, but basically, uh, I was going to film the, the special at this uh, theater in Brooklyn called BAM, beautiful theater. Uh, we had it all locked, everything to go. Production teams there were going on sale in a week. We dropped the Trump episode three hours after that episode comes out. Uh we basically, the venue says, yeah, we don't want you to do the special here, which is probably illegal. They so, said because of Trump? If they no, said because no. of Trump, that's illegal. They, they didn't say because of Trump. Okay. So I can't say that it is Trump. Maybe it's other thing. Maybe they maybe they saw the Trump episode. They looked into more stuff. I don't know. Don't they have to give you a reason, though? Uh, we were reaching out and we're trying to get a reason, okay. right? So, uh, but basically what happens is they're like, yeah, you can't do, you can't do the shows here that we're filming. And um, so, okay, we have to find another venue. We did find another venue. Uh, we're going to do it at The Beacon. This is like an iconic venue in New York I City. Like the Beacon? Yeah. So it, I'm very excited that they had the availability. We're doing a Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, those tickets are going to go on sale. Uh, they should be on sale pre-sale Thursday and then on sale Friday. Pre-sale code is Andrew, as always. So go grab those tickets. What go date is that exactly? Uh, we could look that up. I don't know. What date is that? But let's make sure we go check that Is it out. The weekend before Thanksgiving or after? After. So okay. Thanksgiving's Thursday, then the Friday and Saturday. Okay. We're gonna do the shows. But uh yeah, spread the word, pull up, man. Uh obviously it was just a little 29th, annoying. 29th, 30th. 29th and 30th. 29th, 30th. Yeah, yeah. So it was an, it was annoying with Bam like a month out to cancel the shows. It was very unprofessional and not something that you're supposed to do. But uh shout out to the Beacon for you know coming through and, and making this fucking special. I mean, the Beacon is a yeah, it's just like a, it's a much more prestigious venue, and uh, it's really cool to be doing it right there. I so. really would like to know why Bam thought that was okay to do, because I don't want to get into this this territory where we're having conversations with people that are running for presidents or any political figures, and you know, there's backlash for it. like you should they shouldn't be canceling your shows because of that. I shouldn't be getting death threats because. Yeah, exactly. I interviewed the vice president. Yeah. Like that don't make no sense to me. And we, and and again, I don't know if it's because of this, but to tell you how specific the timing was, we interviewed Trump and went right from the Trump interview to Bam for another production run through where I had our set designers there, the director, the producer, the line producer, the whole team is coming there another time. Mm -hmm. We're going on sale in a week. Never before outside of that Massey Hall situation in Toronto. Where my can't and where they said we canceled it because of the jokes you made. Content. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this has never happened in this time frame before with me outside of that one time where it did happen. And Bam can't use that excuse because at this point, you know Andrew Schultz is brand of comedy. Uh, that's the thing. And look, maybe you didn't know the brand of comedy, but still, you're canceling the shows. If you're either canceled for Trump or you cancel it for jokes. Either way, fuck you. 
Like we don't live in this world where you can't make jokes anymore. We don't live in this world where you can't talk to someone who was president and who is the Republican nominee. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can't exist like that. There has to be, you can claim that you're like this tolerant progressive side, but I don't see much tolerance when you're not even willing to listen to the other side or accept that there is an art form called comedy where we make fun of things. Yeah, and you're not so. going to cancel, you're not going to cancel the networks you love. Like if Trump pops up on CNN or MSNBC. Oh yeah, why aren't you canceling that? Why are you taking it out on the artist? It's, it's, it's very, very strange. Was that the weekend you was going to do it originally? No, we moved it back. We were going to do it before. We're doing it a week before, so now we're moving a week week after. But uh, I'm excited for Thanksgiving. I think that there are people in the city. I think it, there's a good feel, good, especially with what this special is about. You know, I think that... I wonder. Yeah. I feel like the weekend before would be better. Yeah, I think the weekend before you don't you're not concerned that there could be some sort of holiday that could interrupt it. But it's also like Thanksgiving in New York City, the Macy's Day Parade. Like there's a lot of reasons to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I yeah, feel yeah. like I feel like we're gonna be good. Well, that's the fucking time no matter what. <laughs> okay. Because this is the reason why it's annoying when these venues do this shit. Is you're that right. You're right. Getting the you're time, right. You know, so you're right. You're right. Yeah. Um Church announcements. What I got? All the smoke book is out right now. Make sure you go pick that up. Salute to Matt Barnes and Stephen Jackson. Uh, my graphic novel. Salute to everybody I saw at Comic Con. Man, that was fun. I never been to a Comic Con before. Had a great panel at Comic Con. With my man Axel Alonzo, Rob Markman, Dennis Cohen talking about my new uh, graphic novel comic book that we got coming out called uh, The Ill Illuminati. So make sure you go to Kickstarter. Uh, type in my name or type in Illuminati. Go get a copy of that. Um, Did you dress like up? I'm forgetting some. Did you huh? dress up? No, I didn't dress up. Oh, I didn't dress on, up. Man. Oh, salute to everybody who came to the Mental Wealth Expo, too. I don't think we've done an expo since, uh, episode since we did the Mental Wealth Expo, man. That was, was fantastic. That? Oh, that was fantastic, man. I mean, that's one of the most fulfilling things I do all year long because, you know, it's a free event. We bring in all of these great psychiatrists and therapists and grief counselors and spiritual yeah. leaders, man, and just, you know, sitting there watching everybody, you know, throughout the day, just get this information and then providing people resources to continue on their mental health journey and being able to do it for free. That's incredible. Salute to the baby. The baby pulled up this year, had a great conversation with him and Shanti Daz and Elliot Connie. We were on a panel together. Um, Tyrese came out, closed it out at the end with my man, Jason Wilson and Dr. Alfie Breland Noble. That was fantastic. So yeah, it was just a great event all the way around, man. Thank you to everybody who came out. Salute to Dr. Shan Bryant too. She was, she was phenomenal as well. A lot of great people. Dr. Rita Walker. There's a lot of great people, man. Dr. J. Barnett, salute all of y'all. Uh, let's get back to the show. What we got? Let's do some All Memes Matter, Taylor Gang. What we got, Taylor Gang? What else means? Glow Better Sang, Taylor Gang. <laughs> she was on Jennifer Hudson. Let me hear Big Glow. Glow motherfucking Rilla. And I am telling you Come on! That I'm not gonna Sing. You're the best man I'll ever know. <laughs> <laughs> Can I change the key? No, no, there's no way. No, no, no. Where you at? I'm living with you. What you mean? You. Who want to sing next to you? <laughs> I don't want to be free. <laughs> I'm staying. I'm staying. And you. And you. And you. You're gonna love me. Let me tell you something. Lorilla used to sing, by the way. Uh, she used to sing, but then she kind of lost her voice when so she started rapping. Uh, I just did, you know, I got the, the, the show I be doing out of context where I do one on one conversations. I just did one with Glorilla. How was it? it? It's fantastic, man. Let me tell you something, man. Glorilla got my favorite album in 2024. Oh, really? My two favorite rap albums, rap albums of 2024, are both women. Rhapsody, uh, Please Don't Cry, and Glorilla, Glorious. Glorilla album is so fucking good, bro. And I've always been a Glorilla fan. You got to listen to this album, man. You ain't heard it yet? Nah. Oh, my God. You don't know what you're missing. That shit is jamming. She got a song with Kirk Franklin and uh, uh, what's the other gospel singers on that record, Taylor? Hold on. Let me look it up. I want to shout them all out. That's crazy. I don't think I've listened to a single album this year. Because you gay. <laughs> Glorilla, <laughs> Kirk Franklin, the Maverick Yo, City Music Group, get and Kiara Sheard. Health. Go back to mental health stuff, bro. Listen, <laughs> Glorilla's so hard. Like, just the way she rap is just so dope to me, man. You know what I'm saying? Glorilla say, he said, Glorilla said, uh, what, he, what she said, um, he, 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 he wanted to, to see up. this pussy cream. Uh. 
He want to see this pussy cream, so I told him cash rules. She got, she got another line. Cash rules? <laughs> like cash rules cream. everything. Cash rules yes. everything around she, me. Cream, she, get the she money. She got another line. She said. Uh, that, she was said a, that was a fireball. She said, oh, he yeah. nagging? She said, he called me a nag. Put, put your dick in my mouth. Make me shut up or something. And I'm the gay one. Well, really? <laughs> that's, 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 that's why crazy. you're so gay now. Yeah. I think you just listen to female rap. You that's listen to crazy. songs. Oh, harder than all of these. <laughs> say it. No. Say gorillas harder than all of these. No. Listen, I'm not going to say that word. It's hard. Yo, I don't want to say it. I'm not even joking. Glorious Fine, album I'll is so it. hard. <laughs> okay. Listen, the Don't Deserve song. Ooh, yeah. Oh, my God. Tell me that ain't Love is Blind 2024. Nigga, how does it go? It. Oh, y'all ain't heard it yet. God yeah. damn. Uh. Taylor, that ain't Love is Blind 2024? No. You don't Girl. deserve her. It's yes. Like, you know, have you ever told you? <laughs> Isn't that how it goes? Isn't that damn. your favorite song? <laughs> that's, when the, that's when the gay side piece, that's when you ain't know your man was gay. <laughs> <laughs> His gay side piece, the guy just pulls up and be like, put your dick in my mouth. Yo, that you don't is, love her. That is crazy that that <laughs> actually <laughs> happens sometimes. Sometimes guys have guy side pieces. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's Ask fucking... Twin. Side dick is crazy. Ask side dick twin. is crazy. Being the side dick is crazy. <laughs> right? Watch your Side man. dick? <laughs> but he's gay. I'm talking Wait, about ooh. the guy that pretends to be straight. Yeah, he got DL, a girlfriend. Yes. Ooh. Oh, twin is somebody's side dick. He can be. He has... That's craziness. So you're just making some husband's ass hurt. He got to lie and say he pulled his back lifting weights. <laughs> <laughs> He's hobbling around the house after getting a mean dick. Every time he squat, you wonder what that breeze is. You think the air yeah, conditioning yeah, coming yeah, on? Yeah. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> Who turned the AC on? Yo, that's <laughs> fucked. <laughs> That is fucked. What do you do if you're a woman? You find out that. That's so sad. That's what a good would question. you do if you found out one of the guys that you were with? Let's ask a gay guy to just walk in. (laughs) (laughs) Nice of you to join us, Chris. (laughs) Nice of you to join us, Christopher. (laughs) Oh, you just knocked the camera. (laughs) This guy comes here like a bull in a china shop. (laughs) No pun intended. No pun intended. Hey, for Philly, a bull. A bull. Oh, oh, no, that was awesome. Sometimes I don't realize how great I am. Oh, Chosen one. God. Like a bull in a china shop. Whoa. Oh, my God. Chris, grab the mic. We want to ask you a question. Oh, God. Do you have a girlfriend? Do yo, I? We think you yes. got a girlfriend, yo. <laughs> no. Chris, yo, Chris. Tell the truth, nothing, Chris. Tell the truth, nothing Chris. Nothing remotely that exciting, trust me. Chris. Why do you leave all of a sudden every time we do the podcast? Yeah, we're like, yo, this is your alibi pod. for something. You either a serial killer or you a serial cheater. Yeah, bro. Which one? What? Starts with an S. That's true. What is that? Standing meeting. What does that mean? It means I have meetings on the book every week at a certain time, and they just happen to have conflicted the last couple of weeks with this. Damn, bro. We're not important enough. Yeah, the Tyler Perry movie like that's not late at a standing meeting. Because y'all is scheduled. Y'all keep switching it up. Oh, Listen, we man, switching we, up? You, 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 see, see, we, people what act like... two greatest political pundits of <laughs> our <laughs> generation. Exactly. Damn, We're we might busy. need to move the fucking pod an hour or two. I'm sorry, Taylor. I'm Last week scheduled. I had to interview the vice president. I'm sorry. Oh, my Andrew had movies to shoot. I'm We're not, sorry. I'm just saying... You don't have to pause it. I'm just saying because of the schedule. Uh. By the way, we love doing this. We want to do it. We do it for the brilliant idiot listeners. You know what I'm saying? And we, but we just, when we're busy, we're busy. I'm sorry. What do, we, what do you want us to do? Shout out to Glorilla Glorious album, though, man. Go get that. Speaking of Glorilla, Taylor, your girl, <laughs> your girl, she announced her show in Miami. What did she walk out to? Big fucking glow. No way. Big fucking glow. Play the goddamn song, till. Where is it at? Oh, okay. With her cat. <laughs> She's not done with this toy yet? She walked out there with what you know about me. That's what you know about me. Glorilla Sexy Red. They flipped white me down. Okay? Hair, tits, ass. what they say, Taylor? <laughs> her face. It goes her face, ass, tits. Tits, yeah. hair, face, No, her ass. face. Ass, titties. Hey, hair. <laughs> yeah. no, she, say face. Hair. she says, ass, she says hair wrong. 
Yeah. But it's hair. Well, she's from Memphis. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is she saying it? Oh, my yes. God. Her. Her. Oh, my God. How are you a white man explain oh it to you? I hate it. 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 Damn, girl. Well, either way, it works. It's about? still in the head. Yo, any other song lyrics you want to know Fuck about? Fuck out of here. <laughs> Taylor Swift said <laughs> back in the office and she walked out the Big Glow, the hardest album of 2024, hardest rap album of 2024. Don't let nobody tell you otherwise. Anybody tell you otherwise, they pussy like that cat Taylor Swift is holding. Uh, <laughs> what else we got, Taylor? Not the pastor. Whoa. Do you think that that was an endorsement of Donald J. Trump right there? What? what Taylor just grabbing that cat? Oh, do you my think God. that that's what she's trying to dog Taylor whistle? Already endorsed Kamala, yeah. bro. Nah, but she might have pulled that. Oh, shit she's back. a cat lady. Yes, that's that was saying. a cat yeah, lady. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Dan. Oh, fuck, yeah. you're right. She is though, right? It is now. I know you're trying to make. Hold on, let me set this up, Taylor. <laughs> yeah. The headline says: <laughs> The pastor says no ditty while encouraging students at a Christian college not to have sex before marriage. Press play. <laughs> Even while you are here. You may have to say no ditty to an Oakwood student. <laughs> like what? You gotta stop. <laughs> stop trying to sound cool, OG. I'm just being real. No, you're not, because you don't know what that means. <laughs> I didn't even kiss my wife until I made it to the altar, and without pre-kissing, I've been married 40 years. No did it. I say no did it. I say no did it. No did it. All right, yo. Turn off Tim Wolf's pastor real quick, bro. <laughs> what yeah. the fuck that got to do with no diddy? Nothing. Nothing at all. Not sex before marriage. Huh? Sex before marriage. Right. If, if sex before marriage really means we going to hell, that everybody's going to hell. How many people really, really, truly waited until marriage till they had sex? I did. Two people on flagrant. I did. Two people on flagrant? Yeah. Akash yeah. did. Mark did. For, well, yeah. oh, I, mean, I did. I mean, don't I stay did. <laughs> well, one person on flagrant. Mark did? No. I didn't fuck yeah. until I was married. All right. Akash did? Yo. Oh, Akash was a virgin, hey, wasn't he? Don't look away from me like that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I didn't fucking tell I was married, bro. No diddy. The pastor don't even know what that means. He gonna read that fucking... <laughs> Why is he ignoring me? He gonna <laughs> read the police report and that be like, what the fuck did y'all have me talking about? That makes me feel bad, bro. I didn't have sex until I was married, Charlamagne. For real? Yeah. How'd it feel? When I had sex the first time? Yeah. Some Something came out of my pee-pee. <laughs> 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 so, so this dicky came out of my baby hole. It was crazy. <laughs> what what? Is this? <laughs> it was so crazy. It sounded like goddamn like Down syndrome porn or some shit. Yo, <laughs> that remember. must be sloppy. Oh, <laughs> my God. Son, son, come on, Charlotte. Charlotte, this, we are political pundits. You can't talk about how sloppy Down syndrome porn oh, is. Stop. Man. Just grab that dick, snap it off like a broccoli stick. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, yo! Uh -huh. Fuck out of here! Oh man, sex on the spectrum is crazy. Yo, let's play. Uh, what our, our robot it. comes to life, Taylor. Yeah. Oh. No, y'all think about it. How y'all feel? What about I robot coming to life? Think about no, buying like one. I asked AI, my wife. Like, what do you? I asked my wife the other day. I said, "What if I can I buy one of these fucking robots? <laughs> I might like? buy this shit. Y'all ain't gonna front. I know Duval getting one." I just don't want the first version because I know this, this this is like the bullshit one. You yeah, know what you I mean? Got, you got to get it worked out a little bit. I want that, I want that one that's going to be out in a few years. Yeah, but you know that's bullshit, right? What yeah, do you mean? What? It was they humans were... controlling it <laughs> behind the scenes. What do you oh, mean? This ain't really? the Tesla shit that Elon Musk yeah, made? It, it is, but and was they, humans they, controlling humans it were controlling it from a computer in another area. Yeah. Oh. So you can't buy it? <laughs> and no, you, I thought they said it should cost buy it grand. and it's not a real robot. It's just... Get the fuck out of here, yo. <laughs> Bro, you sure? Yeah. Charlemagne is a piece <laughs> I of... I thought life. Elon said this is the Tesla robot. You can buy it. No, yeah, he's yeah. trying to up his stocks. <laughs> Bro, I seen one of them shit driving a Cybertruck the other day. 
Yeah, well, Cybertrucks don't need anybody to drive it. No, I saw one of those shit driving the Cybertruck. Where? In Jersey. Man, get out of here. I'm dead ass serious. You so, I'm not I promise you, man. You saw somebody going to Comic-Con. I saw, no, I saw <laughs> that shit driving the Cybertruck. And I was like, I mean, in my mind, I was just like, oh, that's dope ass promo for Tesla and all they got going on. But, but that shit was driving the Cybertruck. And they now have full self-driving supervised. So the car can drive itself at all times, and you just have to be looking at the road. So this shit ain't real. No, it's not. Oh man! But what would you do with the robot, Charlemagne the God? I just say I don't know whatever the fuck it could do. I don't know what it could, I wanted just to have it. I think that shit would have been cool. I thought that shit was cool since Rocky nah, Four. He gonna get one of them government cheese pussies on that. Thing. Yo, you gonna fuck it, bro? That's gonna be <laughs> crazy. You, right? you know what's so crazy? Them robots have been me to them motherfuckers in twenty five years. <laughs> once, them, <laughs> once them robots got a mind in their motherfucking own and like started tapping into all other AI, twenty five years, all that shit you thought they didn't remember, <laughs> all that shit you thought they didn't remember, they gonna fuck. Can bring that shit up 25 <laughs> years motherfucking later. Okay. Um, so that shit ain't real. I'm disappointed enough. Yeah. What is MCD's new work of me? Me. Sh- me? Who? Donald. Oh, yeah, yeah. Donald was out there working at McDonald's because Kamala never did. Trump is an asshole. This shit funny as hell. Did you watch him at the yeah, drive-thru? Yeah, the reason I say he's an asshole because this type of shit I would do, just to prove a point. Yep. <laughs> you know yep. what I'm so wait, <laughs> what was the deal? Kamala says she worked at McDonald's. She did. She worked at McDonald's for a summer. Then why is he saying he did it for 20 minutes and that was longer? Look oh, at him dude, frying and like fries. He's Trump. Get it, Trump. By the way, they shut this whole McDonald's down. Oh, uh, that's just fire. Look at that. All of this is staged. Look at that. There was no real workers. First of all, a guy that's been shot at twice. No, this is. This, I mean, this might be the real workers, but it's all staged. Like they staged all of this. The people that came up to the drive-through and everything was staged, but. I really don't have a problem with this because it's election season. These politicians used to do shit like this. Yeah, they do. You know what I'm saying? I remember when politicians used to pull up to fast food restaurants and shit like that. Am I tripping, Chris? Yeah, used Clinton, Clinton used to do the old McDonald's thing. He would jog the McDonald's, get lunch, and then jog back. That oh, was, I don't remember that. That was Damn. his signature move. That's yeah. fine. Nah, that That's was you using an alibi like you did, Chris, when you... Yup! <laughs> Yup! An alibi to go, <laughs> go get a little sloppy toppy. Go get a little McFlurry. Damn, why Ply's hating, bro? Who applies to uh, McDonald's hires convicted felons, so it makes sense why he went there. <laughs> Damn, bro. McDonald's will only hire them. McDonald's has replaced Ronald McDonald with a new clown. It's guaranteed he'll screw up your order like everything else he touches. Wow. I hope y'all motherfuckers crazy. talking that shit voting. Because I tell you one thing. Donald Trump get back in that White House. <laughs> Plies might be one of the first people that he puts in handcuffs, mm. God damn it. Okay? So everybody better make sure they out there doing their part. All right? You can't sit in the car. You got to get out there and motherfucking energize who, people to vote. Who, who are the, who are the uh, what is like the demographic that doesn't vote the most? Is it young men? Is it? Oh, that's a good question. Mm. Uh, old good people question. generally vote, right? Is it, do young women vote? I really don't know. That's a great question. I'm just saying, like, we could predict the election based on that a bit. Well, there's already some numbers coming in. Like, they've been saying that the early voting shows people voting for the vice president two to one. Right, but more gay people do that. Hey, man, a, a vote is a vote. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's why I showed, That's why uh, Trump went out there and started shouting out Otto Palmer's dick. He wants some of that gay that, vote. He knew it. He knew <laughs> he it. He need that gay vote. Shout out to gays, man. Y'all the best at voting. Let's pay some. <laughs> yeah, so young adults, 18 to 29, usually lowest voter turnout. And then uh, voter turnout by race from highest to lowest is white, black, Hispanic, Asian. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. So Asians vote the least. Asians vote the least? Yeah. Yeah. What they here for then? <laughs> Chris, talk to your oh. people, man. <laughs> Chris. Yes, sir. Talk to your people. Because I'm hearing that they the ones coming in through the border the most. Yeah, well, that's true. Wait, for real? Yeah. Yes. I heard that, that, that ass. Somebody told me that this week. They was like, really? the mo- out of everybody that comes through the border, the most people that come through the border are Asians. Get well, the ch- fuck Chinese out of really? Chinese, yeah. They, I'm sorry. Chinese, yes. That's what we should be concerned about. That. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying we should be concerned about all of it. But No, but we should be concerned about them. Because how are they getting to... The border to sneak in? Chris knows. They're going through the that route, the uh the pass. Is it the The ass? 
I feel like they could get through the bars on that wall. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> Not like the ass and titties is going to stop them, right? <laughs> they, could get, they could get in there, I right? I told you, five minutes. <laughs> this is what happens when you no, don't listen to me. No, what? Is that what crazy happens, to say? This is what happens when you don't listen to me, so this is your fault, Taylor. <laughs> you don't okay. care. <laughs> now Chris is pulled traumatized. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think they could <laughs> I almost feel like they could run through that shit if they really tried. This is right though. It's hard to get a Venezuelan <laughs> through there. That's the trick thing. There's no way oh, that Latin man. ass getting through that wall. <laughs> no way. <laughs> it's, the, it's the Chinese, bro. The Chinese can get through there though. Let's pay some bills, man. Bessie. Hey, we need to talk about Vessi. When navigating the city during rush hour, Vessis are my trusty companions. Their waterproof technology and comfortable fit make every commute a breeze, especially on those rainy days or snow days with slush piled up around the city. They ensure dry and comfortable feet no matter the weather. Definitely check out their Stormburst boots. It's the winter essential. Their robust build keeps your feet warm and dry, even in the coldest weather conditions. The Dymatech technology in Vessi's shoes means I'm always ready for unexpected weather shifts. Rain or shine, they've got me covered. The removable insoles in my Vessi shoes allow for personalized comfort. They adapt to my feet's needs, ensuring maximum support. Vessi's aren't just shoes. They're a lifestyle enabler. From work to play, they keep up with my busy schedule without missing a beat. If you're like me and you want to be ready for anything rain or shine, head to Vessi.com slash idiots to get 15% off your entire purchase. That's V-E-S-S-I dot com slash idiots for 15% off your entire purchase. Free shipping to Canada, the United States, Australia, Japan, Taiwan, Korea, and Singapore. Let's get back to the show. Rest in peace, man. To Liam. Am I saying his name right, Taylor? <laughs> Come on, Liam. bro. Liam. Liam Payne. Man. Liam Payne from One Direction. Okay. Shout out to One Direction, man. Made one of the greatest snap, the greatest slaps ever. Yeah. In the history of life. Which, which one for you? Best song ever, bro. Which one for you? Because I have one too. Best song ever. Oh, it's called Best Song Ever? Oh, what? No. That shit is like Future March Madness, bro. Oh, my no. God. That shit is like Future March Madness. Come on, Sean. Taylor, pull up best song ever. What? Let that shit fly one time, Taylor. <laughs> Press play on best song ever by One Direction. God damn it. One of the greatest slaps ever in the history of slaps. Maybe it's the way she walks. <laughs> Straight into my heart, I stole it. Through the doors and past the guards. <laughs> the Just like she already owned it. I said, can you bring it back to me? She said, never in your wildest dreams. Knock if you buck. It's all night to the best song ever. I know every line. Now I can't remember how it goes, <laughs> but crazy. I know that I won't forget. I so it's dance all night it's to the best song ever. I think it went, oh, oh, oh. I think it went, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it goes, oh. Well, come on, man. <laughs> Stop playing with One Direction, yo. All right, all right hold on. Yo, Georgia uh, Rose. That was crazy. Oh. And her daddy was a Play this One Direction one. I did not. I did not. Play this Expect One Direction that. one. I'll give it to you. That is a slap. You hear me? I've never. That slap. Really, that really did rip off Bob O'Reilly, though, the intro, I got to say. Bob O'Reilly? Who the fuck is that? It's a song by The Who. It's a famous Play rock Steal song. Steal My Girl. One Direction, Steal My Girl. Ooh. That shit is... It's one, of the, it's one of the greatest songs ever. I don't know any. Because you're an uncultured piece of swine. <laughs> not lyrics. Not lyrics. Not lyrics. God damn, Taylor. Video? Yes. <laughs> the song is called Steal My Girl. There you go. Oh. One of the greatest boy bands of all time, man. I'm not close to Backstreet Boys. Right? You crazy. One Direction or fuck back three boys say. up. I'm going to say Instinct. Mm -hmm. I think one's I think one direction better than all of them. Yo, no, Loki. Yeah, bug it. Bug it. I think one direction better than NSYNC and Backstreet Boys. Backstreet really? Boys. Yes. Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, Boys to Men. Boys to Men. Boys to Men. Drew Hill. Drew Hill. Drew Hill. That's not boy bands. That's a boy band. Backstreet boy Boys got band, no but... single stars. We're here in the name of our I'll give you that. We're here to commit ourselves to a higher form of expression. One direction got Danny DeVito. Two single stars. One Direction had 
Harry Styles and Zayn. Zayn. Zayn is fine. We're going to take it to a new level. We come to the most Can we get to the song? <laughs> Girls love Zane. Zane is fine as hell for no reason. <laughs> just say you think he's cute, Charlotte. You just say, why are you speaking for girl? Girls love Zane. So just say you think he's cute, so. <laughs> Who's the hottest one? Yo, you're a fraggle maggot. Nah, just say. <laughs> you're a full fledged nah, fraggle maggot. Just, just say how you feel, Charlotte. You, you are saw his facial like, yeah, fraggle girls maggot. love that. You want to be in between those two Siamese wrestlers right there. That's what you want to do. You want to bounce your hands back and forth between those sumo. Those be those sumo wrestling bellies. <laughs> Her dad calls me son, all right. Uh. I don't know, Sean. Oh, this slaps. No, Why? wait for it. This video does not make any sense. I know, I know for sure. <laughs> that's, what, that's where the Ooh. Dems got it from. <laughs> In the whole wide world. Africans. They didn't get what? no out <laughs> they didn't get no outrage for this. You know why Alex don't like this song? And you know why Alex ain't feeling none of this music? Oh man. Wow. Cause he don't like 1D, he likes multiples. <laughs> he don't want to be 1D. He wants multiple. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't, you don't like cause you like to take it up the back street. That's why. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> R.I.P. This ain't it, man. R.I.P. Oh, that was the one who died? Nah, this shit slaps. You tripping out. You tripping. You tripping, yo. You tripping. You tripping, yo. Play any Backstreet song right now. It's going to blow this Nah, over. man. Backstreet Boys nah, is cool. He's, no, he's true, though. Like, between NSYNC and Backstreet Boys, which you They have about? much nah, better hits than these guys. Nah, 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 nah. My nah. favorite NSYNC shit is, um... <laughs> um... If I was your girlfriend... That's just Justin That's, Timberlake. No, that wasn't. Yes, that was it is. Insane. No, that was a ju just Girlfriend is not bye, just bye, bye, Justin bye. Timberlake. It's gonna be yeah, May. What? Pull up NSYNC Girlfriends. That's Justin Timberlake. They even got Timberlake. the remix with Nelly. I'm not arguing with you, uncultured swine. <laughs> you know your backstory. <laughs> Type in NSYNC you know Girlfriends, man. Because it's not this. Yes, it is. NSYNC. Oh, you're right. You uncultured swine! You, you better you better know your white boy. I know, you so you know, know your white boy. So <laughs> I don't even talk to y'all no more, man. Ooh, this shit's this a bop. Mm. This it's a bop. Like even it's a, a bop. beat is fine. It's a bop now. It's a bop. Mm. It's a bop. Mm. It's Pharrell. Pharrell mm. did this. Yeah, mm. Pharrell's. It's a bop. Who were they supposed oh, to be in this video? Geez. Mexicans or black people? <laughs> yeah. Like who? Who are they appropriating? <laughs> it feels like they're appropriating a couple different cultures here. Am I not? Am I the only one that sees so. this? No. Hello, Is this Mexicans, black people, or white boys from Michigan? <laughs> I think yeah. it, I think white boys from Michigan. Eight, eight miles. Like eight mile. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> They had a lot of videos like this, though, in a sense. That's in the dirt. Look at the gay one. Cut it, too. Oh, yeah. What the fuck was Lance Bath doing on this song? The song is called Girlfriend. Lance! Look at him. Fake it. Oh, man. It's fucked up. Lance couldn't even be who himself at the time, man. I treat you good. Let's go. Did he say that? Did he say that? Did he say you can't dance like that, though, Taylor. <laughs> Taylor could not be on the roof of that car. I don't want that. That should be a convertible. <laughs> Listen, Girl, let's do some African idiots, this Taylor. fire. Taylor, Girl, let's do some African idiots. Tell again. Damn, Wait, I missed it. I missed it. it. Damn. What? Taylor. Bad, bad, and beyond. Um, Damn, I missed it. <laughs> Taylor. Bad, bad, and beyond. Look, they got backlash for this uh, candle. I'm going to write it back. What happened? Because they look like <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with them? KK Candles oh, is crazy. Oh, wow. KK Candles is fucking <laughs> What's crazy. What's wrong with them? Yo, yo, yeah. Can we have anything? Can we have anything? God, that is crazy. What if somebody Candle. hands you that and says, hey, hang this up somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck was that, Taylor? <laughs> that wasn't real. That is. Get the fuck out of here, yeah, man. It smells good, too. Let's do some asking <laughs> idiots, Taylor. <laughs> Let's do some asking idiots, man. Okay? <laughs> Fresh linen. <laughs> I had to do That's something with Katie Cork in 10 minutes. All right, ready? Go. Rflores.18 says, if you had to work one part-time job, what would it be and Why? Um, something in Capitol Hill, uh, something to do with some type of elected official only because I really want to see how the inner workings of politics are. Like, you know, I talk to a lot of politicians. I have a lot of elected officials that are, that are homies on, on various levels, you know, local and federal. 
And I really want to see how much they can't get done. Mm. I want to see it for myself. Because then I feel like I have a different perspective. Why not just run? No, I don't want to run. I mean, you'll see exactly. (laughs) Yeah, I don't want to run. I just want to see. I want to see the inner workings of it. And then once you see it, you'll know if they're being authentic. They're just a bunch of lies. Exactly. Exactly. Yo, speaking of that real quick. Obama said something the other day that was so real. Everybody got caught up in uh, the statements he made about, you know, black 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 men men. go out there and vote. Yeah. But he said something else. There was another part of a woman married to a white guy. No, he said, and so sometimes, yeah, well, that's yeah, how he got here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. He wouldn't be, that's how he got here. Okay. No, but he said, and so sometimes the other excuse, this is what Obama said, and so sometimes the other excuse we hear when we're talking to folks is, well, it ain't going to make no difference. Well, no, you're right, that we're not eliminating poverty. We're not going to get rid of all problems with race. We're not going to prevent every bad thing from happening in this country. Whoever we elect president, that's not how things work. The question is, do we have somebody there who sees us, who cares about us, who will work on our behalf and can make things a little bit better and so there were a whole bunch of things that i did not get done when i was president after eight years i couldn't do it because it was blocked by congress couldn't do it because sometimes the supreme court stepped in couldn't do it because i couldn't persuade enough folks to do it that's honest man that's beautiful there's a level of empathy for the voter he's a superstar yes barack is a superstar this should be the messaging for the democratic party yes yes it really should this right here forget all that hope and change that barack promised us okay because that was a pipe dream right it, it, it felt good for the moment, like yeah. you know. But this is the reality of where everybody is with politics. Stop promising us the world. I just need to know that you care and you want to make things a little bit better. That's all I'm asking for. Oh, that's beautiful. That this is, should be the messaging, and I like that because he's giving you kind of a glimpse into what I'm talking about, yeah. which is why I would want to see how the inner workings are to see what they can really get done. And yeah. he ran on hope and change, maybe because he thought he was able to do that until he got in the office. Until and, he got in the motherfucking yeah. office. That's right. Um, what about you? Part time uh, job? I'd probably do whatever, uh, <laughs> whatever Chris is doing his little side hustle. Little side I mean? hustle. <laughs> Fraud by Nightmare says, "What's something you still can't seem to comprehend about yourself, even with therapy?" Oh, everything. <laughs> everything. You don't understand yourself. Not at all. <laughs> everything, and not 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 even a little bit. Like especially the older I get, my brain is crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. It's to the point now, I'm just like, I, I sometimes I'll be like, I'll be sending shit to people. Hey, man, say this. Because <laughs> I need it out. I need it in the fuck. I need it in the ecosystem. Okay? I, I don't need to say it. it. All right? This needs to be but said. But it needs to be <laughs> said. Shoot, God damn. Did you ever think about it this way? All right? <laughs> okay? All right? I just like to see the chaos sometimes. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> And I don't know why I'm wired that way. I have no fucking. <laughs> you do eye. need it, huh? Yeah, yeah. Go, I got to have a little. I just need a little bit of friction. What about you? Shit. <laughs> Something you comprehend about yourself with that, even with therapy, man. I don't know. I don't know. That shit. That shit too you deep. Go Say again. You go to therapy? No, not regularly, but I have throughout my life. I think it's important. I think it's good. Um, yeah, like why? Why do I need like to con? Why do I need constant feedback? That's a good one. Like, why isn't it just you get it and then that's it forever? I need the reminder. Like, I need to keep playing a sport to know I'm good at the sport. You know, keep going on stage to know I'm good at it. Like, keep doing any everything to know. It's not like I do it once and it's like, yeah, that's it. I've I've achieved it and I believe that I'm that great forever. I'm like that, bro. I'm yeah. like like when I saw Michael Jordan's The Last Dance and I saw how he took things personal yeah. and that shit fueled him. Yeah. I'm the same oh, yeah. way. Oh yeah. Don't tell me anything good. Oh, really? You I'll want keep the fuel. asking over and over and over. But man, when I hear you talking that shit. Oh, it's going to fucking charge you. Oh, man. (laughs) It's nothing like it. I mean. What does it do? I I just can't even describe how bad I want to shit. Not even shit on you. Because I'm not going to ever go out of my way to shit on you. And I thought, that's so funny we're having this conversation. Because I thought about this weekend as I was sitting around thinking about things that I can't figure out. Right? About me. And I said this to myself. I said, you know what? From now on, I am not, so we should not 
give any energy to anybody who's just trying to get our attention. Yeah. Because that's the era that we live in, right? Yeah. We live in this era where everybody wants to be some sort of critic and they'll get online or get on YouTube or get on podcasts, whatever it is, and they'll have these wild takes that aren't even rooted in anything other than I want some type of engagement by either saying this person's yeah. name or I want this person to acknowledge me. I think all of us in a certain space should not acknowledge anybody unless they're actually good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If they're good. Because I will always big you up for your talent. If I think you're dope, yeah. if I think your show is dope, if I think what you've created is dope, I will acknowledge that. But if it's just something that you're doing because I know you just want engagement or you're just trying to get my attention and you think that's the way to get my attention, I'm never, ever going to give it to you. I love it. Ever. Yeah, I like that philosophy. Ever, ever. That is, yeah. Because yeah. it's beneath you. Yes. Yeah. Like, because it, it comes to a certain point where you have to you have to think about that, right? You have to think about like, why do I care with this person who hasn't accomplished anything? Yeah. What? Why should I care about what they got to say? I think it's less what they have to say. Well, again, I don't know your perspective on it. Like, this could be even not even publicly. Like, I don't like when I'm perceived as something that I know I'm not. Yeah. Like that frustrates me. If I'm perceived as something that I know I am. And I agree with it. And somebody's hating on me for that reason. Like if they're like, this guy tells offensive jokes. And I'm like, yeah, you could feel that yeah, way about yeah, me. Yeah, Even yeah, if you hate that, yeah. you, know, you can feel that way about it. But yeah. if somebody says something about me that I'm not or positions me in a way, I feel like I need, I want to clear the record. And I know. In, that's good. That's good. I know. Suck but my dick. From that, the back. <laughs> that is good. Because here's the thing. At the end of the day, it don't matter what you say because these people are committed to misunderstanding you. And mm -hmm. they're never going to say, exactly. hey, you know what? I had that wrong. Because yeah. now what do they have? No, exactly. And they're doing it for a click. So they're exactly. doing it for the one. So I 100%. But uh, that is the hard part, I would yeah. say. That is a more difficult thing for me to get over. It's wanting to clear historical record. Like it could even be yeah. like, even be me and my wife arguing about something and like she positions some way, something that I said in some way. And I'll be like, I know this is not what it's about, but I don't like that you position that I said yeah. that. Like, and that's not even the fight. That's something that I need to learn. Like, okay, so whatever. That's what she think happened. It doesn't matter because if we debate this, then we're not going to get to the real issue. And, but and, that's a thing for me, how, you know, I'm being perceived you. in a way. Yeah. And, but but perception is just uh, is perception is just how people see you. Also, it's not how you to are. What we said, it's like you're going to see th things yeah, through your right. lens no matter what. So I can't waste time trying to correct people's vision. I am everything. Yeah. I'm not even joking. I might be the only person yeah. who's everything on social media. <laughs> you are a Libra. I am. <laughs> but I identify as a fraggle maggot. <laughs> you okay. are. Listen, I'm you straight. Are. I'm gay. Yeah. I'm a Democratic shill and a MAGA. You're MAGA for sure. I MAGA. pander to black women, but I love black. No, I hate black women. Yeah, but you also pander to them. I'm everything. Yeah. I'm Uncle Tom. I'm an Uncle Tom, but I'm also racist towards white people. Mm. What am I supposed to do? It's almost like when you're famous, people will use you to satisfy whatever their beliefs or feelings about the world are. I don't oh, want wow. to tell you. I, it's, it's actually, I'm, I'm, I sit back, I'm like, how can I be everything to everybody? The reality is, you can't. You're not everything to everybody. You are what they need you to be in the moment. Them. That's right. No, you're absolutely right. If Fox News needs you to be anti-Kamala, uh, then you will be anti-Kamala. Based off something that I'm not even doing. <laughs> like, you know and the same thing if CNN needs you to be pro Kamala they'll make you pro Kamala that's right or if CNN needs me to be uh, the, the black person who is shitting on Democrats which is like no I'm an American citizen yes. who has objective opinions about all of this stuff yep. okay I know who I'm supporting I'm supporting the vice president been supporting the vice president since 2020 when she Still ran. two weeks left. So, so, <laughs> plenty of time. Plenty of time. That's what Laura Trump said when we had her on Breakfast Club. I was like, nope, I'm voting for Kamala. She was like, we still have two weeks. We got time. <laughs> we got a lot of things. Up in, you know, this, she, what restaurant would Donald Trump need to work at in order for you to vote for him? Man, shut <laughs> what, would he need to, what restaurant job would he need to work for 30 minutes Man, for you to be like, he got my ass vote. shit. Say it. Which one? Which drive through would you need to pull in to and see Donald Trump. I don't eat Trump. fast food. Okay, so then not that. Which place? Where do you want to go? You see Donald Trump. You still eat Chick fil A. No, nah, I don't fuck with Chick fil A like that. Even the grill nuggets? Nah, man. Where? What, what is it? I don't know. What would he need to do to win your vote? <laughs> not nothing. Nothing. There's, There's no restaurant he could work at. No. Brooklyn Trap House. 
Brooklyn Trap House? Yeah. God damn, you racist. <laughs> Just because it's black owned, it got to be the no, Brooklyn Trap right, House? Because you mentioned you've got God it. God yeah. damn. You mentioned how much you love that, that restaurant. That was the most racist shit up. said on this podcast today. <laughs> yeah, you God mentioned you love that restaurant. <laughs> what if he was a star tender? As what well, what if, <laughs> he got the ass for it. Yeah. He got the yeah. ass for it. What if Trump was a star tender? <laughs> Come on. As always, if you're Kamala 2024... As always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, you could do both. If you listen to this podcast. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast, you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening.